Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited because today we are going to clear up some myths. There are so many misconceptions about natural hair. So, so, so many and I just, you know, for the people who are considering going natural or even if you're already along your natural hair journey and you've just kind of been led to believe these misconceptions and it has you feeling like iffy or on the fence about your natural hair, like I just want to clear it up, all right? So we're going to get into it. We're going to be real and I'm going to let you know what the true tea is, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. All right, myth number one, a lot of people love to say that natural hair doesn't grow. And I feel like this is specifically even more for my more coily, kinky textures, the textures that are a lot more tight, they tend to shrink more. So then you start to assume that it's actually not growing, but that's wrong. That's incorrect, okay? Natural hair, even the kinkiest, even the coiliest, even the tightest, natural hair textures do grow 100%. Okay, and let me tell you what it is. It is shrinkage, honey. Shrinkage. Shrinkage is it, is it, that's it. That's the thing that's gonna make you feel like your hair is not growing. So there are two things that I like to do in order to make sure that I'm not tricking myself and starting to feel like anxious and like, oh, why is my hair not growing and feeling bad? You know what I mean? So two things that I like to do. One is take lots of pictures. I mean, that's my job. I'm a content creator, but it comes in handy because when I see my hair like side by side, even though it doesn't necessarily grow down, I can notice a difference in density when it's growing. Hair grows slowly, so on a daily basis, it's kind of difficult to be able to say like, oh, is my hair actually growing? You know what I mean? Because it's growing at such a gradual rate. But if you take pictures and do like little side-by-sides, then I promise you, you will be able to tell the difference, especially over like a whole year. And you don't even need to wait a whole year, even just a couple months. A side-by-side -side will be able to clearly show you how like how your hair is actually changed and grown all right and the second thing i like to do are leg checks and it's just this this right here every wash day you know when your hair is wet and it stretches a little bit more every wash day i just i spend a few minutes i mean y'all see me doing it in my videos <laughs> i spend a few minutes like pulling it down and being like oh wow look at where we're at now and i just i kind of try and like celebrate my hair growth you know what i mean so don't fall into that whole thing about my my hair is super curly it's too tight so it's not growing it is growing and you just need to be patient with it and give it time enough to like fall down I feel like natural hair and I know this personally because I did start my natural hair journey from a big chop but I feel like natural hair grows up and then it grows out before actually starting to grow down. And I feel like it's only recently now that my hair kind of drops a little bit, but I mean, you can even see from the top, it kind of like, it goes out before it actually goes down. And that's just to do with the volume, that's just to do with the nature of my natural hair texture, you know what I mean? So I just, bottom line, embrace it. Your hair is growing, take your progress pics, have fun and pull down your shrinkage on wash day. I also do have a video that a lot of people have actually been really, really interested in where I spoke about a long time ago how you can avoid shrinkage as much as possible. So I'll link that up here if you guys want to check that out as well. But I always, you know, whenever I talk about shrinkage, I always like to say shrinkage is a sign of good, happy, healthy, natural hair. So just embrace it and just, you know, you can watch my video for those techniques and you can try out different techniques to stretch it out as much as possible, but just try not to overly stress about it. Your hair is growing, your hair is healthy as long as you're taking care of it, and you'll be just fine. Just embrace it, own it, rock it, okay? Natural hair grows, period. And talking about hair growth, that brings me on to myth number two, which is that you need to use protective styles on your natural hair in order to get it to really grow. That is a lie, that is untrue. I will say, protective styles are great, they're amazing. I don't do them as often. I'm getting ready to do one soon though, so very excited, stay tuned for that. But I do still think they're amazing, I think they're great, and you know why? It's because it gives your hair a break for a couple of weeks, as long as you don't overdo it, it'll be great for your hair. It just protects it from the everyday styling, the harsh manipulation that you might be doing to your hair. It allows your hair a little bit of a break from all of that. So I'm for it. And will you notice 
hair growth while your hair is in a protective style? Yes, because it doesn't stop growing while it's in a protective style. It's still going to continue growing. And obviously giving your hair a break might help it out a little bit. But you don't have to do protective styles for your natural hair to grow. And I can tell you that as a fact because I didn't do a protective style until like way longer down in my natural hair journey. And with that being said, I've only done like less than a handful of protective styles. And my protective styles, actually, I don't even know if we can call them protective styles. I did box braids and kept them in for one week. Like how much of a protective style is that actually? Not really. So yeah, for me, I can tell you guys, like you don't have to do protective styles while they might be great. You don't have to in order to get your hair to grow. So don't feel like, you know, if you're somebody like me and you don't necessarily like doing it so often, you love to rock your natural hair, then don't feel like you have to do that all the time. Don't. Rock your curls. I would say the most important things when it comes to hair growth is making sure that you have developed a consistent regimen that is healthy for your curls with good healthy products, you're listening to your curls, you're getting your frequent trims, all of that stuff is what's going to attribute to your natural hair growth. And then of course on top of that there's the things that you eat. Do you take your vitamins? Are you eating your vegetables? And also, what are your genetics like? Because that's a whole other thing that attributes to hair growth. So bottom line, protective styles are not 10,000% necessary as some people may lead you to believe. If you don't like them, you don't have to do them. Just take care of your hair, be gentle, be good, listen to your hair. If you guys are interested, I did another full video dedicated to my top hair growth tips. I filmed this recently, so it's three years worth of growing out my big chop, going through my natural hair journey, going through all the changes, and it's literally all of my tips in one beautiful video. So if you wanna hear more specifically on hair growth tips and how you can make sure your hair is growing as fast as it possibly can and as nice and healthy as it possibly can, then I'll link that up here and in the description box below for you guys to check out as well. All right, myth number three, natural hair is dry. I hate to hear this one. I really do because I genuinely feel like people, when they see more kinky and more curly textures, they think that it's dry because it's not as defined as those ringlet curls, you know what I mean? But I'ma just say it right now. Put me on the record, okay? Just because there is no curl definition or just because the curl definition isn't as super tight, that does not mean that the hair is dry. It does not mean that the hair is lacking moisture. It really, really doesn't. It is very much possible to have super healthy, happy, hydrated hair that is undefined. I'm just gonna say that right now. There are just some natural hair textures and everybody's texture is gonna be different, right? But there are natural hair textures that again are more coily, more kinky, more tight, that come across like they're not as defined and then that's when people say it's dry, it ain't dry. It's just simply not true. So it's like I could go and do a moisture intensive wash day, I could do all of my moisture products, have the most juicy, poppin', defined curls, and then I could also go ahead and brush my curls out the next day. That's not gonna alter whether or not my hair is retaining moisture. It's just altering the curl pattern. You know what I mean? So don't feel like if your hair is more kinkier, it's not as defined as, you know, a type two or like three A. Don't don't think that. Don't go and fall into the whole my hair is dry thing and then you end up over moisturizing and then you end up with a whole other host of issues as well. So natural hair can retain moisture, can be healthy without necessarily looking like spiral ringlet perfect curls. At the end of the day, you just gotta make sure that you're providing that proper balance for your hair. I always, always preach the protein moisture balance on here. And then just make sure that you're using like the right products. Does your hair like more creamy products? Does your hair accept products that are slightly more lightweight? Do you know what I mean? So you really just gotta make sure you're using the right products. I feel like I'm plugging all my videos in this one video, but I do have a video about retaining moisture in your hair. So if you guys are interested in hearing more in depth on that, that will be linked up here as well. But this actually brings us on to my next myth, number four, which is that you need hair oils in order for natural hair to retain moisture. Eh, also false. So if we get scientific with it, like on a basic level, 
oils are going to be sealing in moisture. They're not actual moisture themselves. Moisture and hydration, that's looking more like creams. That's looking like water itself. Water itself is actual moisture and hydration for your hair, okay? So let's not get those two mixed up. If your hair is dry, you should not actually reach for the oils to try and moisturize it. What you should reach for is your water. What you should reach for is your leave-in conditioners. Use that and then you could potentially, if it works for you, use oils to then go ahead and seal that moisture in. If you know me personally, you guys know that I specifically don't actually like using oils very much in my hair, like the standalone actual oils. I obviously know my leave-in conditioners and all that have oils in them, but the oils that I'm talking about are like the actual like oil that you squeeze out of the bottle. I don't like those. The most that I will kind of do is like the oil mist or the oil sprays if I feel like I need it for a twist out or something like that, but mostly I am able to get the moisture that I need in my curls without even using oils at all. So that's a whole nother thing to not fall into is making sure that, you know, the fr I feel like it's been ingrained in us from like years and years and years and years and years ago. I mean, clearly we see the natural hair community has evolved so so much there's so much more research there's so much more understanding of curly and natural hair there is there's just so much more and I feel like it was like back in the day when oils were the thing oils were the moisture and I feel like that's where that myth and that thought process comes from that's old school that's old school we're on to the bigger and newer and more correct things now okay so you don't need to think oil automatically if you feel like your hair is dry all right so on to myth number five I feel like a lot of people tend to think that natural hair is stronger than all other hair types. It might seem that way because it seems a little bit more rough or like hardcore because it's just big and bad and it's out there. I don't know. I don't know why people think this. Natural hair is just hair. At the end of the day, it's, it's just hair and it's going to be as healthy as you allow it to be. Do you follow a consistent regimen? Do you make sure that your products don't have parabens and sulfates in there? Are you using more natural and or plant-based products for your hair? It all comes down to that. It's really, really not a thing of, oh, the more curly your hair is, the more stronger it is. That's not, that's false. You don't want to go on thinking like, oh, my texture is so super tight. Nothing could ever ruin it. I'm going to go blonde. You know what I mean? Like, no. Hair is hair at the end of the day. Are some hairs stronger than others? Are some hairs more resistant to like heat and color and that kind of thing? Of course. But the, the texture of that hair has nothing to do with how resistant it is to other certain types of damage, if that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense. I think one way natural hair could potentially be stronger is like for example me I was relaxed for 10 plus years I know it was over 10 years at least so like at minimum that my hair was relaxed bone straight and so you know relaxers are damaging to the hair with me comparing my relaxed hair to my now natural hair that has way less chemicals in it and it's allowed to be in its natural state of course my natural hair is going to be more healthy and more strong than my relaxed hair was because it's undamaged you know what i mean but is my hair going to be stronger than sally who has straight hair just because my hair is super curly no that's false all right so final myth we gotta clear up it's something that I've kind of, I definitely fell for this towards the beginning of my natural hair journey and I've like, throughout these years, I've definitely had to kind of learn and like branch out a little bit. And so this myth kind of stems from the whole curly girl method, which says that shampoos are terrible and will dry your hair out. It says that silicones are absolutely evil and you shouldn't use them at any cost. I fell for that 100% percent when i started out my natural hair journey and if you've been an og you will probably be able to see where i started loosening up along the way i came out with a video saying hey i'm using sulfate free shampoos now hey these are what silicones are there are actually some silicones that are okay to use you know what i mean so um i definitely started my natural hair journey thinking that the curly girl method was bible that's what we had to live and die by and if i didn't do it i was gonna have 
unhealthy curls that weren't pretty and yeah that's that's honestly like I was just so obsessed with making sure that my hair stayed nice and happy and healthy that I was just really really like okay curly girl method is it but that is also a myth y'all okay I'm happy to tell you now I use shampoos on a regular basis. I started off using them very infrequently and now I actually reach for them almost on a weekly basis just because I found some really, really great shampoos that are sulfate free. They're also actually very, very moisturizing and also leave my scalp feeling very, very, very happy. So um, just off the top, if you guys are curious and you're interested in maybe trying out shampoos, one that I trust and love with my entire whole heart well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna mention two for two different reasons. But the first one, with as close to my height, is Briogeo. They have a super moisture shampoo as part of their Don't Despair Repair collection. That entire collection is bomb.com. I reviewed it. If you want to check that out, <laughs> go ahead and check it out. There are so many plugs to other videos in this video, but it's fine. I mean, all the deets. Like I always want to make sure I'm providing as much value as possible. But um, yeah, all-time favorite shampoo. It is so cleansing, but also so moisturizing, and I really, really love it. That is definitely one I would suggest. And then also the Adra Beauty Baumint Shampoo, also another moisturizing shampoo. And that one specifically, I like to reach for that if I feel like my scalp is having some issues. It's got all the oils in there, the winter green, peppermint, like all of the above. So if you're looking at me like, girl, I think you're right. I've fallen victim to the curly girl method. I've been a little strict. I want to try shampoos. Those are the two that I would definitely recommend for you to try out. Also, silicones. Still something that I'm a little like, oh, silicones make me nervous. I used to kind of feel like you just can't use silicones, period, right? And, and to this day, I'm still trying my best to stay as silicone free as possible. But am I going to throw away a product just because it has silicone in it? No, I kind of prefer to use the products if they do have silicone in there. I like to use the ones that have silicone further down the ingredient list. If like the second or first ingredient is silicone, then so I'm gonna be like, ooh, that's a bit much for me. Um, I also try to look for the more water soluble silicones as well. Also another video giving you all the deets on that. So, you know, you know the deal. So really, I think when it comes to silicones, if you are using products with silicones in there, I just think it's important for you to know that. So that when you're cleansing your hair, you're putting in a little bit of additional effort to cleanse those silicones out as much as you can. You know what I mean? I don't think that automatically like, oh, I'm using silicones, my hair is gonna be terrible. No, I just think it means that you need to put a little bit more effort into cleansing your hair and making sure that you're washing away those silicones when it's time for your wash day so that more moisture can get back in. Yeah, so I basically learned kind of to not be so stressed out, not be so strict and kind of just, you know, do what it do. There's like the basic things, making sure that I'm doing my weekly deep conditions, um, making sure that I'm just listening to my hair and achieving a, a protein moisture balance. And yeah, those are kind of the things that I'm a little bit more strict on. But when it comes to like not using shampoos and blah, 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 like I, I don't actually believe in all of that anymore. I was definitely tricked into it. So yeah, I would say we could call that one a myth. The curly girl method is just a bit much. It feels like a bit extreme. So yeah guys, that is it. Those are the top six curly girl myths, natural hair myths that I wanted to just, just squash. Let's squash them and throw them away. Get them out of our heads because they're really not true. There's so much more to natural hair than just all of those negative misconceptions about it. So you guys know me at the end of the day, I just, I'm here to help you guys embrace and love your own natural hair. Whether it's super curly, coily, kinky, crazy, big, small, shrunk, short, like, whatever it is embrace it because it's yours it was like a gift to you from god and just don't give up on it keep figuring it out keep experimenting with things keep doing your protective styles if that's what works for you you know what i mean like just embrace it love it love yourself and i just i'm here for all the positive vibes all the positive vibes okay so yeah if you guys have any other natural hair misconceptions or myths 
comment down below. I would love to get into a little bit of discussion down there. And also if you have any additional questions for me, you can comment those below as well. If you are new and you made it all the way here, I love you and you might as well go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss any future videos, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.